our President's Quiz app. Uh, we've built the basic layout of the screen. We've got the picture holder up on the top. We've got another item to hold the question. We've built a group of three radio buttons to hold the choices. And we've got a submit button that the user can press after they've selected a choice. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the main Java code here. And we're going to build our quiz app in this Java class, but we're going to need a little help from a helper class that we're going to build. What we want to do is we want to create a class called question, and we want to store each of the questions in our presidential quiz in a question object. And so to do that, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to come over here and navigate to this app button. And then under source, I'm going to open up the source folder. And under the main, uh, I'm going to look at the Java folder. And we can see that we can get to the quiz uh, right over here. So I'm going to right click now. And I'm going to say new Java class, because I want this class to sit alongside the quiz class. And I'm going to call this new class question. And here you see it's built a brand new class for me. And you can see over here that it's uh, sitting right next to the question. Uh, right next to the quiz class. I'm going to just resize this window a little bit because we're not going to need this left window very much. And I want to have plenty of room to work with over here. Now, let's think a little bit in an object-oriented way. What is going to be needed to hold each question? Uh, so to remind you, each question has a picture. It has some text for the question itself. And then it has the three answer choices. We, we obviously need to keep track of which is the right answer also. And uh, we're going to need another variable to keep track of whether credit has been awarded for this question uh, as well. So let's get started by creating some instance variables. So I'm going to start by going private int picture ID. Now, this uh, int uh, picture ID is going to be the index of the picture that we're going to show for each question. Now, you might be surprised that we're not using a more fancy class here, like some sort of picture class or whatever. But in Android, uh, pictures are easily represented by a single integer. And that makes it really convenient to do that. Now, in a later tutorial, uh, we're going to show how the pictures are loaded into this app. But for now, you'll just have to take my word for it that each picture can be represented by a simple integer. Uh, now we're going to need a string to hold the actual question text. And I'll call that question text like that. And then we're going to need strings for each of the choices. So I'll call this choice A, private string, choice B, and private string, choice C. OK. So now I've got all that all set up. And now I also want to keep track of which is going to be the right answer for this question. I've gone ahead and created two additional variables for this structure. One is the uh, correct answer, which we're going to keep as a string. And another is a Boolean called credit already given. That's going to keep track of whether we've already given credit for this question or not. Now, this correct answer is always going to take the value of either a single character of A, B, or C. As such, you might be tempted to use a char variable here instead of a string. Uh, but eventually, we are going to take the data from this quiz and move it to an external database called Firebase. And when we do that in a future lesson, it turns out that Firebase is much more adept at handling strings and characters. So uh, using some foresight, we're going to code this correct answer as a string variable instead of as a char variable. And this credit already given is always going to start off as false. And eventually, when the uh, student takes the quiz and gets the right answer, we're going to change that to true. The next thing we have to do now that we have all our variables set is we have to create getter and setter methods. We could laboriously uh, go through the process of creating getter and setter methods for each of these. But I'm going to show you a little trick now where we can just use the built-in capabilities of Android Studio to write all that code for us. We just click on Code and I move over to generate and we just go to the uh, getter and setter Ooh, by clicking on this and I'm going to just uh, click on the first one and click on the last one and I'm going to hit OK and you can see that uh, it, it goes ahead and creates all the getters and setters that we need. 
I've also gone ahead and created two utility functions. One is called isCorrectAnswer, which compares a given answer with the correct answer and returns true if the given answer happens to be correct. And for uh, debugging purposes, I've also overridden the toString to return the question text. Uh, if we ever need to write out the question, uh, we can just call this function inside our uh, logging capabilities for debugging purposes. Next, we're going to create a constructor. So once again, I'm going to use the automatic code generation capability. I'm going to come over to code, generate, pick constructor. And it wants to know which of these we want to use as arguments for the constructor. And we're going to use all of them, except for this uh, credit already given, uh, which is going to be uh, always set to false. So we don't need to make that an argument. And I just hit OK. And it goes ahead and creates the constructor for me. And uh, one thing I'm going to add to this is I'm going to make the variable for credit already given always equal to false for starters. And I'll put in a little comment in here saying initially no credit is given for this question because it has not been answered yet. Okay, so that gives us a little idea of why that variable is always false. That's pretty much all we need to get our question structure uh, for this app. And now we're going to go back to the main code in the quiz activity and flesh out the rest of that code. Mm -hmm.